Kavita, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to meet somebody who focuses on one specific vertical. You said you invest in companies, and the vertical is blockchain. Yes. So everybody and their mother has heard about blockchain. <laughs> People are still curious because it's become a buzzword. Mm -hmm. So can we start with the application of blockchain into you know, different applications and how then we take forward to the investments? Yeah, I just did this yesterday with my mom, so let's try it again. <laughs> Uh, I think blockchain is a new, you can look at it as a decentralized internet. Today when we go on Facebook, for an example, and put on our information, that information is completely stored on Facebook servers, or there is a local copy on our laptop, and that's pretty much what um, blockchain is for, uh, sorry, that technology is. When we look at blockchain, it's basically a complete decentralized uh, network space where nobody apart from me has a control on it and whatever I need to do a transaction that's already located and completely cleared on a smart contract way. For an example, let's say if I go on a Craigslist and I hire somebody, I promise them I'm going to give them $10. There is no guarantee that money is ever going to be in their account for whatever reason. But when I do the same thing with smart contract, that's already decided, put it in the computer. So until and unless the person does not deliver me services, doesn't fulfill her or his side of a bargain, that money is definitely going. It's out of my account. So I think that's what the distributed ledger system, the distributed decentralized economy is what blockchain creates. Now, when we talk about application, that's where I start getting like completely crazy because you pick up any vertical. And that's where the blockchain application come up. For an example, um, I think this one is apt for the conference which we are talking about. I grew up in India. When I applied for my master's, um, for my undergrad in US, I had to go through a one-year journey of first applying the process, taking tests in India, getting them verified in US. Then once I got the admission, I had to give them all my transcripts, which took forever for them to verify, blah, blah, blah. Then I came here, I had to take a whole new identity system and everything. <clears throat> if I would have born in a country where blockchain would have been a part of the government system, everything from my birth certificate to my 10th grade degree to my undergrad degree, everything would have been in one system. And wherever I would go in the world, all I have to do is, it's like taking my identity in this cloud, cloud over my head. Right. All I have to do is to appear somewhere, give them, my, uh, give them my private key, which you can think of a password. And everything is already verified in the language they needed or can be verified within the next five to 10 minutes to 15 minutes. I don't have to wait for an year to apply or all these times as refugees take to get an ID or even for me when I came through legal process just getting the driving license to SSN took forever. So just to throw one example of blockchain. No, great, great. Thank you. Thank you for that nice intro. Now let's talk about the investment opportunities. Obviously, uh, like I said, you know, there's a lot of interest. Uh, most entrepreneurs who start with pure innovation obviously are moving to this arena. Uh, so how do you find the potential entrepreneurs to invest with? I think um, that's where the parent company for this fund, which is the GP Consensus, comes in place. Consensus is founded by Joseph Lubin, who is one of the co-founders of Ethereum. So when you have somebody like that, you basically get some of the best talents being attracted towards your ecosystem. And you also have the capacity in-house to judge the best talent because you have some of the best technology brains working with that company. And I think that was something which was most interesting for me when we were exploring creating this fund because um, how do we, blockchain is such a new uh, ecosystem altogether and the way they raise money also with the coin offerings, how do you bring in the traditional VC world into the coin offering world? And that's why the VC model which we say, we call it um, uh, innovative VC hedge fund because you are traditionally investing, making sure that you are helping entrepreneurs to deliver the companies which has value, but at the same time, you are also helping them to raise money in a very innovative manner which has not been done six months or eight months past. So uh, when entrepreneurs today come with that thinking, they have thought through. They have used extra technological layers to thought through that. So I think going back to your question, the ecosystem help, their thinking process of how they have been thinking with these new models really helps. 
and because also it's a, such a new technology there are no courses in the university like maybe there is one or two now and which has come up in last two or three months there has never been some courses so that also gives you a very very deep idea from the first pitch onwards whether this guy has thought through it has a background in it or not how do we look at whether this girl has thought through it and thought through the idea in the west because how do we make because it's a new technology and there's a great opportunity to make this a better playing field mm -hmm. for women yeah uh, to be very honest, um, um, we are trying to promote a lot of women in blockchain spaces already because we, we think that it's, get, having a new space also gives you a lot of new games, like a lot of new rules to play with. And one of the new rules, I have my colleague Vanessa Grillet, who heads the um, Ethereum alliances um, in the world, which is basically already promoting a lot of women programs in blockchain because we want to see more women and genius coming. We want this technology to start growing up with a lot of amazing women brains at the back. So um, from the investor side, I am like always looking for very strong women founders, even if we sometimes do not agree with their ideas, we always offer them like, this is an ecosystem we want you in our ecosystem, just let us know what else can we do to have you in the ecosystem, so yeah. Um, one is uh, finding the talent, the other is nurturing the talent. Um, again, I'm repeating the question for women empowerment mm -hmm. and women entrepreneurs or women professionals in this field. Mm -hmm. uh, nurturing is where I think people like you can play a role. I really hope I can, um, but I also feel like once you like the idea, um, as a VC, you want to support entrepreneurs equally sure. instead of the background, the race, the color, the creed, right? Um, if there is a particular issue which is a very individual issue, of course, you want to go out as a good VC, as a good investor and help it out. Um, but I, like in my past portfolio, I had 62% women, women founder companies in my portfolio. I just naturally feel for some reason I don't know, I don't have any proof of it, but somehow I have a natural feel like as a women to women, you just connect and make it way more easier just from the day zero. And you also connect with a lot of individual issues, which probably they are comfortable sharing with you than anywhere else. And you just help them and think through that. And I want, and I really hope I continue to do that in this role, especially because it's a new, new ecosystem. And if we can get them in a much more stronger manner now, they will create the path going forward. Great. It's yeah. a pleasure again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.